You guys, we're on a brand new house. This is a brand new startup. Uh, we're having some issues. I'm gonna take you with me. Let's check it out, see what we got going on. Okay, so this is a Mercedes model. It's in a closet, a rather smaller house, two-ton air handler. It's got a free draw with the filter down below. We'll check that, pull it out, make sure it's clean. Uh, free draw, direct return. It's like a 20 by 20 stamp grill. A pro stat thermostat on the wall. It is set to cooling. It's 85 degrees in here. It's set to 74. The fan's running. It's calling for cooling. We're going to go outside and see what we got going on. Okay, guys, we are outside. We've got the panel off. And the first thing that I always do is a visual. I like to do a visual before I do anything. And I can tell you right now, I see something that's rather strange on this, this unit here. So I don't know what the deal is. It looks like moisture, like a moisture issue. Uh, the back of the board as well and you and i'll pull it off and show you guys actually you can see it right there looks like uh we've got some moisture problems i don't know if this panel was off somebody took the panel off or forgot to put it back on or what happened here i'll investigate and see what i come up with but i've got my meter out we're gonna check for power uh run through our low voltage make sure we have low voltage coming outside and that's simply going to be ran by common from the contactor to yellow coming in now you can isolate your your wires whatever you want to do but i gotta be careful there's a wasp nest down here so i had to take my hat off and hit the wasp they might be coming back for me okay there we go i got my meter set up to where you guys can see it and on this board here we have common with a bare terminal that down there at the end the blue wire and then the purple is our yellow it's kind of hard to see it but yellow is our purple common is our blue so I'm gonna go across those points with my meter got this one on common I'm gonna do this one-handed for you guys because I'm working with my cell phone here I gotta get my, my my nice camera back in my in my truck So common to yellow, which is our cooling call. We're getting 27 volts. So this condenser is getting a call from the thermostat to run in cooling. And then, so the Y goes into this board, goes through its circuitry, through its safeties, actually goes through the circuitry, comes out. Um, if the safeties are okay, it should be putting out 24 volts to our CNT, which goes down to our contactor. So it's the blue and pink wire on this Goodman GSZB4 system going to the side of this contactor, calling for cooling. So we're going to once again go to our common, and then we're going to go to our CNT. CNT is the, the call coming out from this, this board to our contactor and we have nothing so we don't have any voltage going to our contactor so this could be a number of things it could be a safety switch locking this out so the compressor doesn't cause damage doesn't cause damage to the compressor if it's low on refrigerant um, or it could just be simply this uh, board here this rusted out spot so I'll get a good look at that that is not normal that's on the resistors I believe that is going to be our issue. I'm going to go get my gauges, get the gauges hooked up, make sure we're not out on low pressure. So I got my gauges out. We're going to get them hooked up. It's my S-Man, my new S-Man gauges. And I just want to see if I have... Oh, yeah. So I've got pressure. i got 250 standing pressure. I need to shut my, shut my sides here. I hooked up my low side. It's showing... 250 across the board because my my gaze were open Anyways, I've got pressure so there's there's no reason why that the low pressure should be cutting this thing out. So I think we have uh, a Different issue here And I'm just running through the course here because I want to show uh, this to the guys for for training purposes We've got 24 volts going to our yellow wire outside Our yellow wire goes and connects to the purple wire in this connection box 
that purple wire goes up to our defrost board. The defrost board has yellow, which is now the purple wire, and then blue, the common wire, hooked up to the low voltage terminals on the board. It runs through its safeties. It goes through the low pressure switch, through the high pressure switch, and then comes out with the CNT, the blue and pink wire that goes to our contactor. Our contactor should get 24 volts. The contact point should close in and this thing should be running. We've eliminated the low pressure switch from cutting it out. Now we still wanna test that low pressure switch to see if it's breaking 24 volts and causing the board not to send signal to the CNT, the contactor wire. So we're gonna do that now. So I wanna show you guys something on these GSZB4 Goodman systems. We have the 24 volts that should be coming out of this board here. And and what it is is you have your, your, your safety switches, your low pressure safety switches up top here. And this wire, the CNT wire, if you're getting, if the board's working properly, it should be sending out 24 volts to the CNT wire. The CNT wire goes down inside the, the internals of this, this condenser and it goes through the high pressure switch, comes back out and then makes its way to the contactor. So the high pressure switch doesn't have its own terminals on this board. It goes out of the CNT through the high pressure switch, comes back out and goes to this contactor here. But what we do have here is a, the low pressure switch and it's labeled PS1 and PS2. That's the low pressure switch. And I can show you, you can look down in this condenser and see the uh, low pressure switch, the pink and yellow wire go into that suction line there, the low pressure switch. So we're gonna test that low pressure switch and just see if we're getting 24 volts to that low pressure switch and coming out because if, if it's faulty, you're gonna have 24 volts going to the pressure switch, but not coming out because we have plenty of pressure in this system. Okay, so 24 volts should be hitting PS1. Uh, so we can go ahead and pull that PS1 wire off of the off of the board here. And we don't want to pull by the wire. So it gets you some needle nose pliers. PS1. And go ahead and pull it off. You want to test and make sure you're getting power to that PS1 on the board. So PS1, you can see it there. It's next to the common. We're gonna go across that PS1 and common and see if we're getting 24 volts. Okay y'all, so I'm going across PS1 and common and I'm getting the 27 volts. The low voltage is going out to this low pressure switch. Now let's see if it's coming back out of that pressure switch. So I'm gonna, just gonna hook this terminal back up to the PS1. So that way we're sending 24 volts to the pressure switch. I'm gonna unhook the other side because it's just a loop. It comes out, goes through the pressure switch, comes back into PS2. So we're gonna unhook PS2. And no, this isn't a PlayStation. And we're gonna test coming out of this wire to common. We should have 24 volts if this pressure switch is any good. Okay, so I've got my red lead on the meter inside the terminal of the PS2 wire. And then I'm gonna take my black lead and go to common, which is right here. It's common on the board, C, blue, to our terminal. So this, this should be getting 24 volts. It's getting 24 volts coming out of the pressure switch back into the board to let it know that hey the pressure switch this this unit's got pressure in it it's going to be okay to run so the pressure switch is good which leads to tell me if we're getting 24 volts to our, our yellow which is the contactor the outside unit 
where it's going through its safety, which is this low pressure switch, it should be sending power back out to this contactor terminal, which then goes through your high pressure switch. After it goes through the high pressure switch, it comes out, it goes into your contactor. You should be getting 24 volts if you go across this terminal and this terminal here to our contactor but that's only gonna happen if you're getting it coming out of the board before it goes into the pressure switch. So this board here is bad. I'm not too sure on the circuitry of the actual board, but I, my assumption is that this deterioration on this board, the rust and corrosion, whatever happened to this board, something happened to this, this defrost board and uh, it's causing the condenser to not run which is gonna cause the house to not cool. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna give you a better look at this board. You can see down below is our low voltage terminals. The CNT is what I was telling you about that sends power to the contactor. It actually sends 24 volts out through the high pressure switch. If the pressure switch is closed, it'll send the signal out to the contactor and the unit should turn on. But here's the uh, the rust spot, the damage I was telling you about, just to get you a better a better view on it. I'm not too sure if this got too hot. Uh, it definitely looks like it, it's got some moisture moisture damage on it. Uh, but I got the, the the new board put in. There's the new board. This is what it's supposed to look like. Shouldn't have any rust spots or any moisture running down it. Uh, so I'm going to get the, the power turned on to this unit. The uh, unit fired up and cooling, test everything out. We'll check it out, check the pressures, make sure everything's good to go. Inside the unit is just fired up. Disconnects put back in, we'll go outside. Wait for the time delay outside for this outside unit to fire up test everything out make sure our pressures are good to go do a full-blown report send it to the builder so he can send it to the inspector and he should be rocking and rolling so there's our culprit the bad board Okay, it's fired up. I'm gonna get my high side hooked up. Get my clamps on there, check my superheat sub pool. I take amp draws, temperature splits, the whole nine. It's gonna be a bunch of pictures. I'll send that in to the builder. Uh, that way they have a peace of mind. The new homeowner has a peace of mind who's buying this property and uh, everybody's good to go. Okay, so the unit's been running for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I've got a 139 suction pressure with a 14 degree superheat. Uh, we've got 338 on the high side. It's pretty warm out today. You see, it's uh, on the ground. I'm reading 100, 108, but in the shade. Let's see. So it's about, it's about, uh, I don't know, 85, 90 degrees outside. But anyways, uh, there's our pressures there. The unit's operating the way it should. Go inside. It is Saturday, June 1st, 1.36 p.m. I've got my return air, reading 79.7. Uh, it's 85 degrees in the house. It's what the thermostat's reading, it's gonna take a time to acclimate. It's our inside unit. Got 62 degrees, 62.4 coming out of the plenum. So 62.4 and 80 degrees. 80 degrees going in, so it's 18 degree temperature split. It's not too bad. Let's see if we can pick up on one of our supplies here. Uh, 65 degrees coming out of the vent. Seventy-nine 
0.4 going in the vent. So yeah, I mean, basically that's that's uh, the full report is going to be your pressures with your superheat sub cool. Um, it's going to be your return air temperature, your supply air temperature coming, a temperature split across the coil, as well as out of the vents inside the return. That's basically a full report. Maybe a picture of the thermostat, the inside temperature, a picture of the outside uh, temperature, stuff like that, uh, with a with a pretty detailed description. Uh, that way, this homeowner has a peace of mind. So that's gonna do it, guys. We'll see you on the next one.